This past week, it seemed that there had been a state visit by the Alice Queen Elsa of Arendelle. The white stuff fell from the sky, covering much areas of England, Scotland and Wales in complete whiteness. As a result, we have had some beautiful scenes, treacherous roads, playful snowman and a proper winter. But have you ever picked up a pinch of snow? and taken a closer look at what is actually a snowflake. To start with, the snowflake isn't actually necessarily white. Right? It's actually a transparent ice crystal. The next observation, most flakes that drop onto the ground are somewhat broken, but if you're really lucky, you can still find ones that remain a perfect miniature hexagon with symmetrical decorations. In this week's cold cast, Let's create some beautiful snowflakes with Python. We start with very simple ones that anyone can build within a couple of minutes and continue on to build real, visually appeasing snowflakes using a method that mimics the actual snowflake formation process. Now we log on to edbr.uk and get to our Trinket programming interface and start our work. We use the familiar turtle library to begin with and I'll give it some initial speed and angle and we create the turtle set the pen size to 3 set the initial di direction and change the shape right. okay now we're ready currently we're creating four functions to wrap around the initial functions on the turtle which are called forward backward left and right, right. so what these functions do they merely just wrap around the uh, the original functions and then hide the additional parameters up. The purpose of doing that is to link these functions up to the key stroke press. Right? So you can have up, down, left and right and link it to the screen. Okay, now we start listening and if you look at that, right, we can actually start drawing something already. Isn't that simple? But wait, this is not a snowflake. So, what's special about a snowflake? It's all about the symmetry, right? If you look at the axis of the rotation, you can see the patterns form exactly around the axis, uh, the two identical patterns forming on both sides. In the program, we also need to reflect this by giving it the exact same move speed, but the opposite turn speed. So we create two turtles. You can see that we now wrap it around in a loop and we also need to move forward, backward and left and right for both turtles right. so that we can draw the two turtles at the same time. Let's have a go and uh, oh, it doesn't work because we haven't really appended the additional turtles onto our list. Now it looks like it's working. Right. This is like a little plant. So what do we want to do now? We want actually to draw the opposite side as well to form the whole axis of rotation. Yeah. And to do this, we just need to add two more turtles with the opposite sign of the speed and the same opposite sign of the turn speed as well. You can see that we are now doing it very easily. After we have finished building the first axis of rotation, we also need to add additional axes too, as we know that a snowflake has three axes of symmetry, which are angled at 0, 60 and 120 degrees respectively. We therefore make the init angle variable into the list of these three angles and subsequently add an, an extra layer of loop over these angles when creating the turtles. We should now have a 4x3 a total number of 12 turtles at work. Wait, but only four are moving. Uh, this is because in the forward function we only move four turtles at, at a time. We can try to fix it by changing the loop count to the number of turtles and limiting the move speed index by the size of the speed list. Now it, now it behaves much better. Here comes another issue though. I can't work out which arrow I'm supposed to be driving, as there are dozens of them going in all directions. 
Let's fix that as well by hiding all the turtle workers except the first one. Let's have a try again. Now works and the direction of travel is much clearer. I'm now drawing a proper snowflake. Well, the simple version of our snowflake drawing code is now complete. Feel free to play with the game and become a snowflake pattern designer. Both of my daughters were totally addicted to it. I promised in the beginning that I should show you some fancy stuff. Here he comes, a modified version of our snowflake code that generates nice looking snowflakes by itself. You have the full code at edbr.uk and I will just talk over it in brief terms. The outline of the program can be summed into the three sections. The, in the initialization, the crystal branching, and the th crystal growth. The speed and pattern of branching and growth are both controlled by the initialization stage. The striking feature of this snowflake code is that randomness now drives the process. Let's run the program and build our first snowflake. You can see the crystal seed budding, growing, and got expanded into a full-sized flake. Let me stop talking so you can watch the, the amazingness created by the randomness. Well, you might have wondered how the branching and expansion are determined by the three probabilities which determine how often we branch and how often the back angles and semi angles should occur in the branching. Through a couple of degrees of randomness, we manage to create fascinating, satisfying snowflakes that resemble the real ones. The probability setup is not a bad mimicking of the real ice crystallization process. Try it out yourself, and thanks for watching Dr. Lee's Codecast this week. Thank you.